Force fighting out of the blue corner. He stands five feet seven inches tall. Official weight 125.1 pounds. He is fighting out of Cork in Ireland and brings with him to the cage a professional record of six wins with four defeats. Introducing Darren O'Gormor. Standing opposite him in the cage, fighting out of the red corner. He stands five feet six inches tall. Official weight, 125.5 pound. He is fighting out of Massey in France and brings into the cage a professional record of five wins with three defeats. Introducing Nicholas Blanc. Your referee in charge in the action begins, Mr. Daniel Moverheady. The gentleman, Dan Moverheady, about to get this one underway. Three five-minute rounds if they need them in the cage. Warriors flyweight division. Ready? Ready? Well, Mr. Motherhead, you're very proud of his uh, Iranian roots, and there's a, a national holiday today. So big up any Iranian fans watching Cage Warriors. Darren O'Gorman in the green shorts and the blonde in the black. That's not a pair of shorts you're going to lose easily, is it? <laughs> a nice high kick from O'Gorman to start things off. You know, don't be fooled by the six submission wins on O'Gorman's record. He's more than capable of mixing it up on the feet. And he's the slightly taller, longer fighter here. Oh, well, that's a nice straight left hand from LeBlanc, though, in the southpaw stance. LeBlanc's been very keen to talk about his... Uh, aspirations of being the most complete fighter that he can be he doesn't want to just be known as a judo guy or doesn't just want to be known as a striker he really thinks that his ability to blend all those styles together is what sets him apart from the rest of the cage warriors flyweight division he's got a chance to take out a known and respected name in O'Gorman here today this one of a, a two-fight skid, a, a split decision loss to Adam Amersinger back in 2019 and then that thrilling contest against Conor Hignett. Came very close to finishing that fight with a triangle in the second round, agonizingly so. So he's looking to get back on track here. Dan, the good thing about this Cage Warriors flyweight division is it's so stacked, a couple of wins over anyone can put you right back into title contention. Title course held by White Cole and Jake Hadley. Terrifying prospect under 125 pounds. Oh, nice shot to the body there from the blonde. Mixing his areas of attack up a little bit now. Oh, and that's wow. a clubbing shot. That's taking the legs out from underneath LeBlanc. O'Gorman pouncing and immediately LeBlanc in on that leg. Yeah, really, really wobbled in there. Couldn't find his feet under him. Engaging the clinch straight away. There was a quick look like a guillotine attempt there and shrugged off. I think he's uh, still probably trying to recover a little bit here. Great some distance, but yeah, very, very significant strike there. Oh, and another one from O'Gorman. His corner roaring him on now. Yeah, I think uh, a very good advice from the corner to try and capitalise on the damage he's done. But in doing so, looks like, looks like he had a pretty hard shot there himself. Yeah, it's like a nice straight left hand. That's a, a power shot there from the southpaw. LeBron definitely still in this. Oh, coming off the cages, O'Gorman. Gets caught again now, needs to keep those hands up. Business picking up here with 90 seconds on the clock. Nice combination. Those fast hands from LeBlond. Really his best work against Sam Creasy. See if that speed advantage can be the deciding factor here. Against a slightly taller, rangier striker in O'Gorman.
Il en reste une minute, Pico. On se gagne cette minute. On se gagne cette minute. Oh, 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 oh. Dan talked a bit about the the pressures and maybe the frustration of being the guy like Darren O'Gorman who's, who's very competitive against high level guys but you know just coming into this one off, off a bit of a bad streak that must be weighing on his mind a little bit. Yeah well you never know how an athlete is going to take a string of losses you know for some people it can be it can feel quite heavy you can feel like the pressure is really really on you to get back in the winning column and then for other people they feel like it's the motivation they need you know perhaps they've changed their train they feel like they're going to reinvent themselves and come back as a different person so it's all down to the individual really and the big shot from the blonde there clinch up the blonde pushes his man up against the fence you know we've got 10 seconds left in this round really not much to do here but some strikes in this clinch position could be something that the judges are going to be looking at now very close first round both having success in the striking there it looked like both athletes, athletes did get wobbled at one point but certainly uh uh, LeBlanc being a lot more visibly hurt anyway uh, earlier on there. Yeah, it almost looked like it took him a second to realise that yeah, his legs had gone out from underneath him. Yeah, it, it was a, a delayed, a delayed uh, rock there. Let's take a look back at some of the action now. Beautiful body shot from LeBlanc there. Just mixing up the strike levels. And hopefully we'll see this, uh, the big shot that that rocked his man. There it was, and yeah, really took the legs out from underneath LeBlanc. Yeah, he did a fantastic job of uh, changing levels there, and uh, you know, you can see it's so dangerous when the opponent sees that weakness, they can really pour the pressure on. LeBlanc doing a really good job, and there is his retort to that initial strike. Yeah, it's a case of uh, anything you can do, I can do better <laughs> there from LeBlanc. Very, uh, very similar striking percentages in that first round. They both landed around a quarter of the shots that they threw, so the volume certainly there, but O'Gorman throwing a lot more. Wow. Long clinches. Goes for a bit of a trip, doesn't really commit to it, but woman goes down a little bit straight back to his feet. Now, I wonder if, uh, for a second there, it looked surprised even that Gorman actually took that that trip as much as he did. Maybe could LeBlanc could be thinking about actually engaging in the grappling a little bit more here. Yeah, we, we talked about that desire of LeBlanc to be known as a, a complete fighter, but how long before he does maybe dip back into that judo background and try and clinch up with his man here? Well, you know, the whole point of being a complete fighter is that you can dictate where the fight goes, and if you feel like you're going to have more success on the ground than a complete fighter who's smart is going to try and use his tools to try and take the fight there. It's really aggressive, pushing the pace, but the output of Gorman's still very, very high, and really mixing it up with the punches and kicks. Yeah, still O'Gorman throwing more, landing more. Oh, and again, the nice straight left from the blonde. And, you know, when we talk about figures and stats, Dan, the more important factor here is the impactful strikes, the big moments. You can outland someone by a significant margin, but if every strike they throw and land is a big, impactful strike that causes damage, that hurts their man, that rocks them, that wobbles them, that's what the judges are looking for. Yeah, for the blonde look right now, I think that's exactly what's happening. You know, Gorman throwing a lot more, uh, but look at these. All oh, huge wow. shot! Oh, Gorman's dropped to the blonde, following up here. There we go. When, when the blonde is landing these shots, they are really hurting his man. No more than just now, and he's really laying on the pressure. Oh, Gorman trying to get his legs back underneath him. Yeah, the blonde looking to tee up the big left hand. Oh, Gorman firing back though. Yeah, he's definitely still hurt here. That's a shootout, and Oh, Gorman is taking some solid left hands. He's getting out of the way though. Still very much in the fight. Still trying to throw back. 
that left hand of LeBlond is like a piston. Yeah, he keeps on catching that kick and throwing the straight off of it and catching him. And I'm really surprised that Gorman isn't shooting, trying to change level, engage, and just give himself a little bit of time to recover fully from this barrage of strikes. Interesting, LeBlanc hasn't thrown a single kick in this fight yet. Perhaps that's going to be a way to disguise the left hand, but he doesn't need to. Unbelievable. Nicholas LeBlanc gets his first win on Cage Warriors and does so in style. What a knockout there. Yeah, unbelievable. You know, this round, he just looked much stronger. First round, very, very tight. Second round, and then O'Gorman was throwing a lot more, but Le LeBlanc was picking his shots, and every time he hit him, he was getting a big reaction, and then he started to land more and more on those big, powerful hooks. Just uh, what an incredible finish. The left hand of the southpaw, LeBlanc, like a piston. Yeah, hit point accuracy, and LeBlanc out. Yeah, he was out with that first shot, I think, and that second one just sealed the deal. And we saw those earlier flurries from LeBlanc really hurt O'Gorman, took the legs out from underneath him, and, and perhaps he never really got back into the fight from that stage. Very much in defensive mode, still throwing back, still trying to do some damage of his own, but it was one-way traffic in favour of Nicolas LeBlanc. O'Gorman just receiving medical attention in the cage now. He is sat up with the doctors in the cage, just getting a, a little bit of oxygen there. I'm sure he's going to be up on his feet in no time, but fighter safety, of course, the number one factor here at Cage Warriors. take another look at some of the action here just keep an eye on the left hand of LeBlond all the time he's always trying to set it up and when it lands it lands like an absolute hammer what a beautiful shot here slow motion Referee down overhead his arm, unfortunately, just uh, blocking the shot a little bit there, but what a beauty it was. And O'Gorman now is uh, talking to the medical team. He's being helped to his feet, and he's going to leave the cage of his own accord. Now, the, looking at the stats from this one, really is telling just how much more O'Gorman threw. But we talked about the big impactful strikes, the big moments. He was uh, certainly the busier man, but the huge game-changing moments of that fight all came from Nicolas LeBlond and the vast majority of them with that absolute piston of a left hand from the southpaw stance. And I believe we're ready now to throw this one to our MC in the cage, Mr. Hal Chaplin. He will make this one official. Ladies and gentlemen, your referee, Mr. Daniel Moverheady, calls a stop to this contest after three minutes and 20 seconds of round number two, declaring your winner by way of knockout in the red corner, Nicholas LeBlanc. Well, a big win here at the Trilogy to kick things off for Nicholas LeBlanc.